You're listening to Barbell Logic, the podcast where we talk about what it means to experience strength and how you can use simple, hard, and effective strategies in training and nutrition to improve your life. It starts with meeting you where you are right now and finding lasting solutions. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am your host, Matt Reynolds, here with, again, Nikki Sims. Welcome to the show. Hello. And Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah, Happy New Year. Our second podcast of the new year for Experience Strength. Uh, coming out with video podcasts as well as audio. So if you listen to audio, you can find us on YouTube. We can't share the URL yet because those YouTube URLs, they're pesky in the beginning and they're long and terrible. So you're just going to have to try to find us. And then once we've had a URL... Uh, or once we've had a YouTube channel for 30 days and we have 100 subscribers, we can actually say, oh, this is the much simpler URL, at which point we'll yeah, actually speak we it. We don't want to do the 23 <laughs> no, letters. letters and <laughs> hideous. Also, if you are watching on the uh, video podcast, it did look like I died and went to heaven uh, in this room. <laughs> it is incredibly bright. Uh, it's because it we snowed. We need like ethereal music like yeah. you're coming down to bring us the word. Of, That's right. <laughs> the word of strength. That's right. The gospel of strength coming to you today. Uh, yeah, it, it snowed a couple inches last night and it's and it's one of those days like post snow where it's super bright and sunny outside mm -hmm. and it's and nothing. The snow's not dirty yet because it just finished snowing about an hour or two ago and now it's sunny and it's like incredibly bright in here. Well, thanks for not wearing sunglasses to record this. That, <laughs> that, would, be... that would have been awesome. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, if I ever wear sunglasses on the podcast, it's probably not because of the snow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> From the snow. <laughs> that's right. So one of the things we wanted to talk about today with it being the new year is that a lot of people are starting new programs or new, uh, maybe a new fitness journey. And that is often really overwhelming. Uh, it's definitely overwhelming for somebody who's never done it before or somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience in it. it it's often overwhelming for people who have who are, as we talked about True. last week, sort of changing the momentum from experiencing weakness to experiencing strength. And so we just want to talk about if you're just like, man, I don't know where to start. We want to try to make it as simple as we can for you. If, again, I mentioned this last week. Most of our solutions are going to be simple, hard, and effective. And so simple and easy doesn't work. Gosh, I wish it did. That'd be great uh, for all of us, <laughs> but it doesn't. So it's going to be simple. It's going to be hard, right? But that's there's some pride we can have in that, that we often are trying to do things that other people won't do. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. And uh, simple plus hard often equals efficient, uh, effective, efficient as well, <laughs> both. Uh, and so we'll just kind of tackle that. I want to dive in today. So one of the things I always notice, you know, I, I, I ran a gym, owned a gym um, for, for a long time. And of course, we always would have that big New Year's rush. By the way, if that's you, I think that's great. Uh, if you've made New Year's resolutions, and I don't see it as much as I did a few years ago. I don't see people really kind of... Um, pooping on that as they used to, mm -hmm. man, everybody starts somewhere. And if the impetus to start yeah. is January 1, that's great. Do it. Great. Do it. Go to the gym. Be part of the crowd that's in there yeah. doing what they want to do to get something started. And like, know awesome. that <laughs> most people, it won't stick, but for some it will. And some mm -hmm. of us who have been in this industry for a long time, look back and go, man, in 1999, I started in on January 1, you know? And so that's, for some of us, it will. So I think it's great. I think New Year's resolutions are great. I think they need to be attainable and relatively short, um, you know, goals that you can reach in the in the first couple of months or so and not something that's like, oh, I am I need to lose 10 dress sizes or reduce my waist 12 right. inches. Like, that's too much. So, uh, you know, get those little wins. We'll talk about that a little bit today as well. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is that at New Year's, most of the people that join a gym, the vast majority, maybe even all, join a gym because they're not in a great place. They're not in a great place physically. They're often, almost always as well, not in a great place mentally or emotionally. So they feel unhealthy, maybe from the holidays, or they feel like they've gained a lot of weight, or most people, we actually got some great, saw some great stats and some data this week that most people who are training are training for quality life improvement and to feel better and to be healthy. Like that's number one, like by a mile. Yeah. I think like at, at the end of the year or as we come into the new year, you're in the spot where 
you were enjoying yourself, you were spending money on gifts and traveling and eating whatever you wanted. And now we don't have those like really nice feedback loops of eating and drinking and buying and giving. And we're just stuck with our bodies. And we're just like, shoot, my bank account is not where I want it to be, nor is my body. And I'm just feeling grossed out (laughs) with who I am right now. And so like, just looking for something better. We want to feel better, like immediately, like you said. And so we'll create these like huge goals. Yep. Well, and and it's interesting that you say that because one of the nice things about the calendar of the new year is that it's immediately after all the holidays. So we've had all these celebrations and food and family. And for some people, that's great. For some people, that in and of itself drives a lot of stress. Um, Yeah. And that's over for everybody. It's the new year. It's sort of new beginnings. But for most of us, we're not going to be in the, at the beach in four weeks. We're not, it's going to be a while for me. I'm going to be at the yeah. beach in two weeks because right. I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> I'll probably go to the beach <laughs> tonight. For the yeah. Time. You live in Orange <laughs> County. So, okay. So not us, but most of our listeners are not, which is nice because you don't have to, you're not going to have to accomplish the big goals in the month of January, in the month of February. You've got some time if those, if those, um, healthy goals, um, aesthetics goals, performance goals are important to you. Those are going to take a while. However, what I love about this is that the feel good stuff kicks in pretty quick. So you can actually feel a lot better by the end of January, like a lot better. And I I talked about this last week. I had started uh, to, if you hadn't listened last week, go back and listen last week. But in the first half of 2021, I experienced strength. I was in the best shape of my life. I was eating really healthy. I felt really good. The second half of 2021, not so much. And by not so much, I mean, not at all. And so tons of travel, (laughs) business travel, got sick a little bit, holidays, all that sort of stuff, put on weight, didn't train much, felt terrible. Uh, The last two weeks or so before Christmas, turned it around, changed momentum, started that discipline over motivation sort of thing. No, and I knew when when we recorded the last podcast, I was in a I had developed a cycle of experiencing strength, but I did not enjoy it yet. I didn't want to work out. I didn't want to eat healthy. I wanted to eat biscuits and gravy. I watched Netflix. Like you were just feeling the hard part of simple heart effect. That's right. (laughs) However, over the last couple of weeks, that has transitioned and now I'm very motivated to yeah. Eat well and train some of that is it being in the actual new year now the last time we recorded that was towards the end of the end of the 2021 and um and so i knew that the motivation would follow and so one of the things i think uh encouraging pieces that i would that i would tell our listeners is that if you're trying to change those habits you just got to dig in and be disciplined for a little while and the motivation will come and then focus on the way those changes make you feel because the, 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 the good feelings of developing a system of experiencing strength and health, those feelings come pretty quick within the first couple of weeks. Now, listen, the first couple of workouts, the first week, the first 10 days, you're like, this is gross. I hate everything about it. And that's okay. <laughs> but they will come and you start to feel better. And so you start to, you know, the, you make meals at home, the healthy meals at home. And the way those meals make you feel in the aftermath is way better than the fast food made you feel, which also was great when you ate it, but then mm-hmm. you would feel terrible, right? And so now yes. you get that motivation. So I would just say as a more as a, a big picture sort of encouragement to our listeners is that know that it's okay that the aesthetics, like, look, you're not gonna lose six inches off your waist in January. You're not gonna double your strength. You know, you're not, like none of those things are gonna occur. But uh, those are long-term goals. But some of those short-term goals, you can start to go like, oh, I can, I'm going to feel a lot better in two weeks. I can lose a half inch off my waist this month. I can, whatever those things are, right? So yeah. where do you start as you start to change those? Or what are your thought processes, processes as you start to change that mindset? Yeah, I think like having been in that situation more than once where I'm just like, I hate where I am. I want to be somewhere different and I want it to be now. Yep. You have to be like, you have to be okay with where you're at right now. And that can be difficult. You have to acknowledge that it took you some habits and some choices to get where you are. But if you stew in that, then you're not going to feel like you can make any changes or maybe even deserve to make any changes or you might just be stuck. Yep. Where you where you're coming from. So just being like, okay, this is where I'm at. 
I want to change. I have this time in my schedule. I have this motivation. That's like a perfect place to begin because you can go anywhere from there instead of kind of being stuck in that deficit where you just came from. So I think that's a really important thing. And then you touched on this just a bit ago. It was like zooming out on time because, you know, you want it to happen immediately. You want to look better in your yoga pants immediately, but it really does take some time. But I think the doing something that actually feels difficult feels good because yeah. you get that like, ah, this is working me towards something. Yes. Um, and you start to, like you were just noticing too, you have to go through the hard part before you feel the effective part. But I think doing the hard part is what makes you trust that this is going to work. Yeah. Because there is this period where you're not really sure if what you're doing is even going to get you there. And that's where I think starting a new fitness routine is kind of overwhelming because the internet is a crazy place. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was hoping you would mention, you wrote an article that came out this week or by the time you guys listen to this past week. Can you walk through that? It was, it's a great message, right? Of yeah. how overwhelming. I wrote this the, one, I think a couple of years ago, actually. And I thought, I thought it was a re- it's still, okay. Awesome. Yeah, it was a redo one. But um, yeah, the idea is that we when we're kind of stuck somewhere, we'll tend to look for distractions. And I think a lot of the distractions come from online. We're just like, oh, I'll find what I need here. But that's you're looking for the answer, which is actually holding you back from doing anything. And you're being distracted on your phone by looking at Instagram and just kind of end up in this kind of terrible loop about not feeling great about yourself. So my encouragement is to just pull yourself out of the internet fitness world because I think it's overwhelming with people who are just really playing into that part of you right now that doesn't feel good Mm -hmm. like playing into you're feeling badly about yourself and so they're trying to get your money really and so i think by going on a i called it an internet fitness detox you start to take more action you instead of looking at your phone and researching all these different programs go to the gym like drive to the gym and do something it doesn't even matter if it's the wrong thing like do something now because i think the habit is more important than the answer for at least a couple of weeks. You can go to the gym and do leg curls and bicep curls for a couple of weeks because that gets the habit going. And then or just you walk and on I, a treadmill. you and me, Matt, yeah, walk on a treadmill. I mean, and then it's better we're going to want you to come and barbell train because yes. we know that that's the best thing ever. <laughs> but get the habit going first more than anything instead of like trying to get that fix. Yeah, I, I love that. So um, we're going to, I think we talked about this last week a little bit. One of the goals of the podcast or the primary goal of the podcast in the new year is really to identify these problems or these challenges that we have, that our listeners have, and probably talk a few minutes about them, kind of what that means on an emotional or philosophical level. And then and then we want them to have, we want our listeners to have really clear take, take away action items, right? Like things that they can do. And so as I started to think through, we made notes for the show, I, I thought same, same thing, right? So look, would I love everybody to go in and start a barbell linear progression this week? Yes, right? Some of our listeners are like, I don't even know what that is. I barely know what a barbell <laughs> is. I have no idea what linear progression is. That's okay. You're not alone. Don't worry, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I would love everybody to go barbell train because I think it's the greatest return on investment that they can get. But far more important is to start a thing that can lead to a sustainable habit. And, and so to go in and go, man, I don't know where to start. It's okay. Almost nobody does, right? We're going to give you some actionable takeaways for those of you who are wanting to learn places that you can go after the show today and you can just start to learn that stuff and in a pretty short amount of time. So I'm with you. My first really major piece of advice is start today, like today, not tomorrow. Today, do something, right? Walk around the neighborhood, go walk on the treadmill, right? Do the best you can with barbells, go in and do pick 10 exercises of machines at the gym and go through like a body weight circuit. Yeah. It, it literally doesn't matter, but do yeah. something starting today. Like you can always push it back till tomorrow. You can always push it back till next Monday. I'll start Monday. You got to start today because the goal that we're trying to do here is, is, is start a sustainable habit. Right. And so along with that is, and I see people do this. So the other side is some people are very unmotivated. They obviously everybody wants to look better. Everybody wants to feel better, but not everybody's really motivated to put in the work. Some people at this time of year, those like type A people like me, you you know who you are. You're like, I'm all in. They I want to do it all. Don't. Mm-hmm. 
start conservatively, <laughs> right? Like, don't try yeah, to do why, everything why at is once. Why that a bad idea to do everything right now? Well, one, because it's not sustainable. Nobody can do everything forever. You won't recover, right? So part of this, uh, as equally as important to this fitness process of doing the thing is recovering from the thing. But the other thing is that we want to have um, strategies or cards up our sleeve that we can play when we plateau. And so if I throw everything I can at it from the very beginning, I will make probably really nice progress for two, three, four, five weeks. But then I'm going to hit a wall and I'm either going to yeah. like, burn out and I'm going to quit because I hit a, a mental wall or I'm going to hit a physical wall and can't recover. Or I'm just going to even even for some of you, again, type A, like white knuckle discipline, self-righteous Please. people, <laughs> you can do it and you're still motivated, but you don't yeah. have any more cards to play. You're like, I did. I. I'm doing it. I'm working out two hours a day, seven days a week. You can't recover yeah. from that. So start conservative. And then you're going to get some tweaks kind of right. soon. And you're going to have to do less, which is going to maybe put you, maybe you'll be like ready to do less, but also you run the risk of it being like, ah, if I can't do everything, then I'm going to do nothing. Yep. Which is not where you want to be again. No, that's that's exactly right. I, If you haven't been doing anything or much of anything coming into the new year, then your body hasn't adapted to doing anything. It actually will adapt and get better by walking around the neighborhood, mm-hmm. by riding an exercise bike, by whatever, going to yoga. I mean, it doesn't like it doesn't have to be the super high ROI. There is going to be some return on investment for anything if you've been doing nothing. And so number one is do something. Yeah. If you look at your energy expenditure in a month and you're like, okay, last month, the exercise I did was to go to the gym twice and then I walked a couple of times and I went on a hike. Like that's it. Total sum of exercise. And then if you plan out this month with like, and you already see like 21 days on the calendar of when you're going to exercise, huge. That's already that's right. a huge difference. Massive improvement. That's right. So the other thing I would say that goes along with this, and, and some people will think it's, it's, sort of arguing against what I just said is for me, or if you have a, if you struggle with consistency, I would challenge you to try to do something every day. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying train every day because we can't, we can't recover, especially most of the people listen to this podcast as you and I are middle-aged. Are you middle-aged now? Can we call you middle-aged? <laughs> I'm going to be 37 this oh, year. Oh, that's totally middle-aged. That's late yeah, age. Premenopausal. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm the one with the hot flashes still. So Good. I love being hot. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> part of that for me is about, it's about developing the habit. And so, and blocking out the schedule. So I block out the schedule every day and make it a priority that, that cannot be compromised. This is, this is the, in the same way that you don't compromise. Most people don't compromise their dinner. Most people don't compromise their shower oh, or brushing no. their teeth. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. They're, like, they're not like, oh, yeah, sure, I can do that Zoom call at 6 p.m., like right when dinner, my dinner reservations are. Like, no, 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 no. Right. So if you decide whatever time of the day is the day you're going to exercise, not specifically train, you block that out. So for us, that looks like for Rachel and I, I train with my wife and we train at our house and we train four days a week, two upper body days and two lower body days. But we do something at least two other days on the non training days, and it might literally just be a simple cardio workout or a really brisk walk around the neighborhood, which we actually do almost every day. It's something that we do and we enjoy together. And we just do those things because it continues to set the habit for me. And if you struggle with the habit and for some people, they don't, but it's, I mean, if you can do your three days a week or four days a week in the gym and you never miss, that's fine. But for me, as soon as I miss a day or two of training, I'm out of the habit of training. So I don't have to actually go in and squat and deadlift. It might just be, okay, during this time, I this is more of a recovery day. I'm not going to beat my body up. I'm just going to walk around the neighborhood with my wife. I'm going to do something that's healthy, that's going to get me out of my seat and move. And for me, that's important. Now, again, that probably won't carry over to everybody. But if you're trying to develop the habit, best way to do that for me is that is to do something every day at the same time. Yeah. So. And then what about for those people who are just like, okay, I hear you. Now, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> What do we tell them to do? Okay, so great, great question. So we own an online coaching company. I don't know if anybody does. <laughs> so, I don't know no, if you've heard of it. It's called Barbell Logic. Yeah, so I actually don't want this. I mean, obviously, look, we, 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 I'm definitely going to talk about things that I think that we can offer at Barbell Logic. But I also think one of the things that I love that we've done is while we're a service company primarily, I, let's just be honest and transparent. We make all of our money from, from coaching 
from providing online coaching to people, not from the podcast, not from the articles we write or the eBooks we put out or the newsletters or the outstanding YouTube videos. Those things are all free. And so the first thing I would say before I even give any sort of sales pitch, like, hey, let's figure out how to get a dollar out of somebody. I think one of the best things you can do is just start with our YouTube channel because it's the most short form, like the vast majority of videos that we have on that channel. We have what we call long form videos and short form videos. And our long form videos are like six minutes. They're still really short. <laughs> Age is long for me for a YouTube video. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And our short form videos are like 47 seconds. They're always under a minute. And they're called gym shorts. They're called gym they're shorts, which I think super you- Super quick. They give you- You came up with that, I think, right? <laughs> Very I clever. So, yeah. <laughs> so one of these days when we retire from this company, you can go run a marketing. You're always, you're coming up with, the, you always got those great little taglines. I don't know. We'll see. So, <laughs> this is my so, contribution yeah. to the world. <laughs> That's right. So you're like, all right, I'm out. So yeah, you could, one place you could, one thing you could do is you can start to educate yourself just by watching YouTube videos. And I'll tell you one thing that I do when, especially when I'm doing sort of simple, mindless cardio, walking around the neighborhood, walking on a treadmill, something like that. It's not training. I'll watch YouTube videos while I'm exercising and I'm learning mm. and I'm like, oh, this is mm -hmm. interesting. And so, so that's a great place to start. You can absolutely start at the Barbell Logic content. We've tried to make that content free for everybody, high value for everybody. You can watch the Barbell Logic YouTube. They can pick up, there's a, there's a whole getting started series previously here on the Barbell yeah. Logic podcast. That's a great place to get started. And it's going to focus on barbells itself. But the other thing that we've tried to address this year specifically and something that we've been working on for six or eight months now is many of our listeners and many of our clients have family members or friends or neighbors or whatever who see the benefit that our clients have received from barbell training and they want the benefit, but they're pretty intimidated by the barbells or they've mm -hmm. never used the bar. So it could be as simple as I've never used barbells before, so I don't know how. Um, yeah you know, I don't have access to barbells. I don't want to look stupid when I go to the gym and use barbells because I feel like yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to look stupid and everybody's going to laugh at me. Or I'm just kind of like scared. their husband has the basement gym and whenever he walks down there, he's got like knee sleeves on and wrist wraps on and this belt and he Turns makes a bunch Pantera. of noise and you're like, right. that ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, you're like, mm -mm, that's not what I want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I go in, if Rachel gets a workout in, you know, on her own, like it's, you know, it's... uh it's Justin Bieber playing in the gym or Ariana Grande or you listen to Justin Bieber. Okay, while look, you work I'm out a Biebs also. fan. All right. Leave me alone. <laughs> He's an amazing artist. He, he is. He's great. No, but agree I don't, agree. Yeah. so I don't care what you listen to when you train right? Right. or when you exercise, or if you want to listen to a podcast or a book again, it, it comes back to like, what is sustainable? So, so number one, and like when you get started, you get to make it your own training. Experience. That's right. The barbell is the thing that's consistent with this training program, but everybody gets to have their own gym experience. It's really that's fun. Right. There's actually, while it's like a very, it looks almost, it looks pretty boring of a program. People get to do, they get to kind of make it their own, which is really, really fun. That's right. So I would say there's really three levels of getting started or three sort of um, different sort of people that would get started. So one is the, man, I'm just not ready to go to the gym and I'm not ready to touch a barbell and... Also, like, I don't, I, I can't really hire a coach. I don't have the money to hire a coach. Go walk, walk around the neighborhood, yeah. right? Walk on the treadmill, walk, do like, do something, get, get up and be active and do something every day, right? And yeah. Don't worry about doing the perfect thing. Anything is going to be better than nothing. It's okay. Yeah. And if you are getting information from the internet, which I know I told you to not do earlier, um, pay attention to if you're on a site that just keeps making you watch videos and not do anything. That might not be the right one. But if That's you're right. on a site that gives you some information that makes you actually feel like putting the phone down and doing something mm, I like that, that's probably the good one. Because if you instantly feel like you can do something and you have the tools to do it, that's good input. Which could be like learning how to squat, just an air squat. Learning how, sorry, I think you're yeah, going. Then you're like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah, so, so <laughs> yeah. addressing that group of people the thing that we've tried to work on is that we have developed an entire series of, of how-to videos that are on YouTube for free, just so you don't have to hire us for sure. It's called Before Barbells. It's a Before Barbell series. So it's again, it's not called the Barbell Logic Bodyweight Program. It's Before Barbells. The idea is to prepare you to be both physically and mentally and emotionally ready down the road for the barbell. How soon? Mm -hmm. Two weeks? Four weeks? Nope. That's you. Up to you. That's up to you, mm -hmm. right? And... With that, we offer the same 
great level of coaching that we at Barbell Logic for people who are not ready use, to use barbells. And it's perfectly okay, right? So yeah. you can come in and you say, oh, I want to do before barbells and we'll connect you with a coach who's, who wants to work with clients that are not ready to use the barbell, that'll talk you through things and be encouraging to you. And so that's an option as well. And then here's what I love about what we've done. You know, we there were years, you know, you've been with the company forever. We spent a bunch of money on marketing. And a few years ago, we decided, yeah, we're going to kind of stop spending money on marketing and we're going to give it back to the client. And we said, so starting, and we continue, we've continued to make that better. We don't run sales. However, every single person that signs up at Barbell Logic, the first month is 100% free and there's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel any time. What's the catch? There's no catch. <laughs> we think the service yeah. is good and we think you'll stay. And if you don't stay, it's on us. It's not on you. So you can join, literally not spend a penny, try it out for three weeks, three and a half weeks and be like, not for me and never get charged, which is a pretty sweet gig. This is your contribution. That's right. <laughs> I come up with gym shorts. You come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> good. But yeah, I mean, I think that's really important because that first month, that first month, which is free, you can get a ton of guidance. And the catch is that you do have to do the work, but you, and you have to communicate with your coach. Like it's not just buying a membership that's going to make everything happen for you. Like it really is you deciding to make some changes. That's right. And what but I love about it is you can do it from home. Before mm -hmm. barbells, you don't have to have any equipment. As a matter of fact, our coaches will work with you if you've got, well, a lot of times we'll like procure, like you have a dog. Yeah. You got a dog food bag. You got some dog food in a bag. Like, yeah, you got a 40 pound dog. Yeah. Let's do that. Right. Or go grab a milk jug or, or, or just or body your dog. Weight. Literally you know? grab your dog. <laughs> yeah. Or pick your dog up depending on how big your dog is. <laughs> so it's, so yeah, you've got options there for before barbell, barbells. And then the third option is for people who are like, man, I recognize the value of strength and the value of barbells. And while I don't know exactly how to start, like I know that that's the direction I want to go. And we offer that as well. Both, again, Barbell Logic, our YouTube videos and, and the content for free. You can access that and kind of learn how to perform the, most of our YouTube content is kind of a how-to, how to perform the lifts. We'd also let, love to have you at Barbell Logic. Again, same thing, same deal for barbell users as non-barbell users. It's like first month's free. There's no commitment, which is really, really nice. And so, yeah, I just, I just want to strip away as much friction as possible for people. I really believe in what we do. I love yeah. being able to provide this content and this educational piece. It educates both our people who are not our clients or who will never be our clients. It educates people who are future clients and our current clients and coaches as well. So the content's great. But man, every single day we get to change a whole bunch of people's lives and get to work with them and develop relationships with them as coaches. And it's pretty incredible. And so I believe wholeheartedly in what we provide. And so I'm like, man, why wouldn't we let people try this literally like for free, not one session, but a whole month and let them cancel at any time. So if it's not for them, again, it's, it's, it's up to us to keep you. And so it's a pretty sweet gig. And it's a great place to start. What motivates our coaches is when their clients do well. Yes. That is a huge source of value for, for you and me. We're both coaches and for our staff. Like that is motivating. That's right. So you get to work with someone who wholeheartedly wants you to get better. They yeah. want to see your strength improve. They want, they want to hear the things that you're getting better at. Yeah, they're as excited about your personal records as you are. And yeah, that's really it's nice really too because in, in the fitness world, most people don't care, right? Like you don't really they're care. Like, okay, when are you going to buy the next set of 12, 12 sessions? Yeah, or yeah. even like if you just go to the gym and you don't have a coach, like, you know, the people at the gym don't really care what you bench press or squat or, you know, how fast you can run a mile or any of that kind of stuff. But your coach does at Barbell Logic. Our software is designed to tell you how you're improving. Yeah, I love it. That's good. Like it says, you just hit a PR. Like it shows you immediately. Like it's, we're so, uh, we just really want to see you PR and get better. <laughs> yeah. 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 And again, we talked yeah. about this last week. Our goal for my goal for my life, and I think your goal for your life, and our goal for our clients' lives and our coaches is to improve their quality of life, to improve the way mm -hmm. they feel and, and health. And so, man, we love looking better. We love feeling better. We love performing better and hitting actual like PRs on the squats and the bench press and the chin ups and the push ups and whatever those things are. But ultimately, I just want my quality of life to improve and I want to do the same thing for my clients. And so, how gratifying is it that we get a job where we get to like the goal is to improve quality of life? 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> and we actually yeah. get to see it work. And so it's pretty incredible. So, so yeah, so you've got several options there. Start today for sure. If you don't know exactly what to do, just do something and, you know, spend some time just trying to absorb information and educate yourself where you can, but don't wait until you know, feel like you know everything to start. Nothing yeah. should stop you from starting today. And then if you can, we'd love to help in any way we can at Barbologic. And how about, should we give someone a little bit of guidance on if they're like, okay, I read about the linear progression. What should, what should it feel like for the first couple of weeks? So we'll talk about this in a future podcast episode on programming, but we use something called the minimum effective dose style of programming. And it means like, we're just going to add a little bit of something like we're going to do the minimum that if for the greatest return on investment, and the only thing we're going to make tiny little changes to keep bringing back great return on investment. So again, it comes back to that idea. We don't throw the book at something from day one. We're like, okay, what's going to give us the greatest return on investment for the least amount of work, which is actually what we want to do, which is still hard work. So good work. Right. And so for everybody, what we want to do is we want to, we want to train the entire body if possible. So for barbells, it's going to be things like the squat, which trains your entire bot, really your whole body. It's going to load your back, but certainly going to train your lower your body, body, your legs, your butt, your soul, your, yeah, your everything. Heart. That's right. <laughs> right. Sometimes your soul leaves your body in the middle of a squat. <laughs> it starts, <laughs> right? So heavy squats. <laughs> if you don't do barbells, there it's still squats. It's still body weight yeah. squats and chair sit to stands. And those are squats, right? Mm -hmm. We do deadlifts, which is just picking stuff up. So for some people, they're going to pick up a barbell. And every mm -hmm. session, they're going to come in and they're going to squat and deadlift a little bit heavier than they did the day before or two days mm -hmm. before. And, you know, Monday was their Friday. Which is a good reminder to start keeping a logbook like day one. Write down everything right. you did so that you know how to do a little bit more next time. That's exactly right. And, and then we do the same thing for presses, right? So we bench press or overhead press. And you can do the exact same thing at home with things like push-ups. You're like, I can't do a push-up. Yeah. Sure you can. You can do a push-up against the wall. Mm-hmm. You might be able to do push-ups on your knees. There's a really funny demonstration video of me doing push-ups against a wall. That's where right. It just looks like I'm banging my head into the wall. So <laughs> at least go check that out for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has to start somewhere. And I think that's the other thing as well when it's yours and your own. You, it's, it comes back to your article that you wrote about you know Instagram and social media. We don't compare ourselves to other people. That's not what this is about. That's why it's called personal records. So we celebrate these records. Like if, if you did push-ups against a wall and your feet were 12 inches away from the wall on day one and they're 14 inches away from the wall on day two, that's a PR. Heck yeah. Right? And so just as much as we'd celebrate a 400-pound bench press PR, it doesn't, like, the PR is what matters. Like, what the weight is, does I mean, sure, sometimes you see some stuff and you're impressed, like, wow, that's an impressive PR. But any PR is, is celebrated for us. So so yeah, we, we just focus on those full body movements. So things like squats and deadlifts, picking stuff up. And again, at home, it might be like picking up a kettlebell or picking up a suitcase or picking up a sandbag or a backpack full of books or a milk jug or a couple of milk jugs. Like there's lots of options of like, everybody's got something heavy at home they can kind of pick, they can pick up, right? Or your toddler yeah. mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna, like, we're gonna pick out- a, <laughs> Or your spouse. That's right. We're gonna teach you how to pick up stuff <laughs> off the floor and not get hurt. That's the goal. And in yeah. barbells, we're going to do the same thing. Cool. And then we're going to do a little more each time. So at home, if you don't have weight to add, you might just add reps. You might do like, okay, I did, yeah. you know, five push-ups a day. I'm going to do six push-ups in two days and then seven push-ups two more days later. And, and that's kind of what we do is we train kind of every other day. And on those off days, we'll go in and, you know, we'll do some, just do something healthy, move, like go, go play tennis, go, you know, go walk around the neighborhood, go like whatever, like you at this point, like you go roll and do Brazilian jiu-jitsu on your days off, right? You pretty much train almost every day and you're either weight training or BJJ training for the most part. So six days a week. It's gotta something be like something. That. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and then mm -hmm. even on your off day, like a Sunday, you're still I see you go down to the beach, you walk around the neighborhood, you walk your dog, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Because you feel oh, better. I do a lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's fun. That's where we start, man. You just start. People think that they have to overcomplicate this. And that is, I think, a testament to one of the major broken pieces of the fitness industry of personal training, which is incredibly broken. You know, everybody knows almost every personal trainer, the vast majority of personal trainers out there don't know what they're doing. And they pay a bunch of money and the personal trainer might have a great personality. It might be somebody that's cool to hang out with and 
you know, it's like makes it fun for an hour, but doesn't actually know what they're doing in the grand scheme of things. And often will try to sell you both in person and online complicated things that you can't figure out on your own in order for you to continue to have to pay them. Because if I can't ever figure it out, I've got to pay the trainer. I've got to pay the coach. And again, I think it's one of the things that we pride ourselves on at Barbell Logic is it's simple. We're not, we're not selling complicated programs. We're not selling complicated like training systems. We're selling professional coaches that yeah, you they're, can't. They're problem solvers. That's, that's right. What they are. That's right. Yeah. And so you'll figure out the programming pretty quick, real quick, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but the coaching is the thing. And, I, and again, I think the other thing that we strive to do is create good, uh, healthy, personal relationships with our clients, which is very tough to do and very rare in the online coaching world. Uh, because we have so many touch points with our clients, we're talking to our clients almost every day, certainly three or four days a week via video breakdowns and talking through their workouts with them on occasionally on zoom call zoom calls or things like that then then you get those touch points so you get the accountability you get the personal piece and that makes it a lot better too you when you have a coach and we we do this we're you know we we've been coached by our coaches and each other for years and there's something different about when you've got a video of yourself on your phone and you guys send it to your coach you're like oh man oh right? yeah it this was, holds me to yeah, another standard like, matt coached me to my biggest deadlift of all time it's freaking yeah. awesome yeah. like when you have someone helping you do that it is so it is the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it adds this like piece of, there are times when you don't have a coach that you might be like, I don't know, maybe I won't train today. But when you do have a coach, mm -hmm. like if I don't train today, coach, mm -hmm. I'm a coach is going to be like, not, to, <laughs> not to get you in trouble and not to be, but be yeah. like, Hey, everything. Okay. Yet. And you're like, mm -hmm. uh, I just decided to stay home and watch Netflix <laughs> or whatever, right? which a lot of people want that, that accountability is great. And so, or yeah. even just turning on the record on your phone and you hit record up oh, there's oh no sorry henry there's is there somebody at the door outside. sorry there's no that's good let's catch it on video let's see if he'll, <laughs> no, no. See if he'll eat the milk pan we'll eat the amazon delivery <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> thank you henry we're all safe now <laughs> he's an excellent guard dog excellent guard dog yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah there's something that's really nice about being able to uh kind of take it up a notch to sort of put some pressure on you to perform, to turn on. It's not, it's not scary because you've developed a good relationship with your coach and your coach is super encouraging. But as soon as you hit record on your phone, you're like, man, my coach is going to see this. You Dude, really pay attention list, to the form. My technique is always better once I turn my camera on. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so that's a, that's how to start, right? So for a lot of you yeah. listening today, you're either brand new, you've never done this before. You've done it a couple of times, maybe failed. Maybe you've done it, done it well, and now you're trying to like turn that momentum again. There's something for you at Barbell Logic, regardless. Like, and again, that's, that doesn't mean you've got to be a paying client. It's not what we're saying. Lots of great content out Free there. Free stuff. Yeah. Free stuff. Start today. Go out if yeah. that means Whatever going out. Whatever you feel like doing walking. right now, if you feel like standing up and doing walking lunges, stand up and do walking lunges. That's right. Start <laughs> everything right great. now today. That's exactly right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. So next week we're going to talk about how do I get started with nutrition. Because I know, gosh, if fitness isn't complicated enough, oh, man. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> nutrition can be so complicated. And what I love about this, we'll have our, our head nutrition coach on, Jillian Ward. She's incredible because she's able to connect with the human element, of which I think is mm -hmm. often forgotten in, in nutrition, right? It's just sort of, a, I mean, at its basic level, nutrition is often just the math, like calories in, calories out. But right. that appeals really well to robots, which we're not. Yeah. Unfortunately, and, we have these things called emotions that's right. and that makes things really hard. <laughs> that's right. So if you're worried about wondering how, like, hey, get started this week, get mm -hmm. six, seven good workouts in between now and, and, and the podcast next week. And then we'll talk about, yeah. here's how we start with nutrition. And we'll start really simple and go from there. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again so much for listening to the Barbell Logic podcast. Would love a five-star review, especially at Apple Podcasts, although I think a lot of other places, including Spotify, are now allowing reviews. So anywhere that you can give us a five-star review would be excellent. We also would love any feedback on YouTube. Again, uh, these will all be on YouTube. If, they're, if it's a little bit hard to find in the first week or two, they will be on and easy to find here after the first few weeks. And they'll all be on there forever um, on a new YouTube channel. So if you go to the Barbell Logic main channel, the YouTube, uh, the podcast will not be on there. We'll put all these new ones on their own channel. And so, but would love any feedback requests, for future episodes are wonderful. We always listen to those things and we want to hear what the clients or what the listeners are listening for and, and what would bring them value. We want to do that every single week. And uh, 
just tackle those problems and bring solutions. Let's do it. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Peace.